what's up everybody, my name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Last time we, uh, well, cleared this town out of Nilf Guardians, but we don't have the troops enough to uh, defend it from future Nilf Guardian invasion. So uh, we just took all the gold from their cowardly mayor. Uh, I'm supposing those people aren't actually really happy about that. We haven't any reason to rejoice, friend. Black clads will be back. Just you wait and see. Indeed, so that's why. Grim prospect. They'll either hack us into pieces or drag us off to labor in chains. Yeah. Grim. So, so, sorry, Grim. dudes, but uh, needed to make the hard decision there. But last time we also saw a ghastly sight at one of the shacks. Uh, if it wants to load in, there it is. So there we have a sort of wraith. Uh, we'll see what type of this in just a second, because I'm just going to bump into it. Here we go. In Darkness. Ooh, that's a cool card. It's not in Gwent, actually. All of Edern burned cities, villages, forests. When the flames eventually died out, the kingdom choked on a black, dense smoke that blotted out the sun. It became dark. So dark that beasts which owned once only prowled at night now too hunted during the day. So I'm gonna suppose it's a night raid then. So a bit of a ghost. I have no idea what that card's gonna do because it's never been in um, Gwent in any way. So I guess we will see. Um, we can set a row on fire, maybe not that bad of an idea. And just remove the sightman. And remove the Lydian Horn and the Field Medic. And the Sightman. Yeah, there we go. And Egg transforms into his pass. Ooh, look at that. Those are all new cards. A Bargas, so the Ghost Dogs. Whenever a Haunt Timer expires, spawn a base copy of Self. A Haunt Timer. So a Night Wraith. Every three turns on turn start, haunt the highest non-haunted enemy and move it to the other row. Every turn on turn start, damage all haunted units by one. Hmm. Haunting. Gives unit the haunted category. Removes it when the haunting unit's timer expires. So, I would want to take out the bar guests to just... Take care of all that. Uh, just let's just set the row on fire as a start, and we'll see what we can do with Watch that later on. <laughs> the Mirrorlorn haunt target unit for nine turns. Whenever the haunted unit takes damage, damage it by an additional two. Okay, so I think the healing will come in handy. Um, uh, and Raynard is actually useless at the moment, so might as well give uh, give Dad a try as well. Company, forward march! Then the Wraith, another new card. For three turns on turn start, haunt and damage an enemy by one on the first turn, then increase damage by one for each following turn. Uh, I am gonna use the Forager to start taking out my own units. Because that limits the amount of hauntings that will happen. There we oh, go. And kind of preserves the points I have. Okay, so it passed. Which means I should probably do the same and then let this end on an equal. Yeah, let's do that. The round ended in a tie. Which is fine by me. Um, I think I'm gonna swap out the Field Medic and the Sightman. Let's start with the Sightman. Hmm. Because I can play a random ally from my graveyard. Yeah, okay, never mind. Then let's start off with just that. The field medic what do and whatever we get me? from the... Okay, it's a forager. I only need corpses. Except sometimes they're quite fresh. Then. 
I think next up should be Delirian Sightman and maybe use our Meave ability. Because we have five turns of cooldown on that ability. So maybe I should wait a little longer. Let's just use... Because, yeah, Ake is a Holy Warrior. So we do, we do damage by the unit's power and then strengthen itself by two every time something is damaged. So I think we should actually focus on... Getting more points ah, on the board for now. So that boosts Egg up. And that plays another raid. Uh, do need to keep my eye on my turn counter. So I don't accidentally do something wrong. Let's use the Forager. I could use the Forager later on, but it's pretty much the only card that doesn't actually affect anything else or that I have more units for. So I'm just going to use the Forager on the other Forager and remove one more Haunting. So next up, yeah, we have three monsters. Uh, and then we can use the Stray Slinger. So let's swap those around, and that way we do damage as well. And we boost uh, Gascon in hand. That should be enough, I think. Although, you know what? I'm going to use Meave now uh, on those guys. So that's eight more damage, and we boost the Sightman up as well. So Egg is going up, 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 and away. Then another stray slinger. The white of an eye from away. Focus on the Merylorns and the Wraith. And then the turn. And those bar guests are still gonna come and go. Uh, let's use another stray slinger. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. And then take the Megalorn out. Um, and then the rest, I can't really equalize any of these units. So just gonna go leave the Bargus as it is. Because if they keep spawning, I can use Meave to damage them a lot. And then focus on the Wraith and the Megalorn. There we go, one Megalorn down. Let's end the turn. So haunting timers will start to expire, so the bar guests will keep coming. Let's put Gascon on the field. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. So more bar guests, of course. Um, the Lyrian Merlot will be most effective as Egg is at is its maximum, so I should do the Morana Runestone first. So I can pad out the runtime a little bit longer. Should have gone with the Lyrian Horn, but can't really know that beforehand, of course. And we heal and boost everything. Seems like we are going to win. So another Haunting. Haunt an enemy for five turns. Whenever it takes damage, boost self by the amount damaged. Okay. Let's just use Egg again. And we can use him to damage a unit. So I am going to take out the Wraith in the back. The Night Wraith in the back. Uh, sad that there aren't any higher units. But uh, there we go. God's blasted. Take out the Wraith. To disallow it to boost too much. And then end the turn. Every turn on turn end. Damage a random enemy by one. So that's its original... Usage, and then we can damage all the bar guests by four. So that's 11 damage. Boost our Sightman as well. And then the Lyrian Merlot can be used to boost that Slinger up to 67. So let's pass. I think we'll definitely have one. I know there's going to be three more bar guests, I think. Or not. No. There we go. Victory. So yeah, this deck is really powerful against monsters, especially with Ake. It seems like the damage dealing is doing what it needs to do. That's a weird puddle. 
What's this? Milady, the cottage is abandoned, save for the man hanging under the roof. I believe he should be cut down and buried, but the soldiers are hesitant to carry out the task. They claim touching the corpse of a man who's taken his own life can bring bad luck. Um, I don't want to risk morale at the moment, so uh, is that so? In that case, let's turn back. Oh, I can actually... Ah, okay. I can just keep doing that, apparently. And we have another chest. One that I haven't opened yet, so let's check it out. Ooh, another avatar border. Thank you very much. That seems to be it. Another little camp, but only the chest remains and probably the people all died. So, uh, moving back onto, to, onto the track so we can head towards Rosberg further. So there's a path on the outside here as well if you want to completely uh, gloss over the little town in the corner here. We did check out the notice board and I think, oh wow. Yeah, the area has been set completely ablaze. Gatberg opened its gates to the black lads. Surrendered without a fight. They take the young and strong as slaves. Leave the elders to starve and win. Elves and dwarves, dirty non-humans took sides with Nilfgaard. Then of a sudden, it does from the back. Well, not all of them. The young and strong but uh, yeah, the Squiretel did take sides with the uh, the Nilfgaardians. Is there anything here or... Can I just walk around this place? Yeah, okay, never mind. There seems to be a bit of wood over there and a dispute. So let's take a look at what's going on over here. My queen, the inhabitants of this dwelling have given shelter to a wounded Nilfgaardian. The landlord said he found them in a field bleeding and raving deliriously. He decided he couldn't leave the man in such a sorry state, so he invited him into his home. Our soldiers are outraged. They say we must finish off our enemies, not give them new life. Hmm, interesting. So, I either gain morale, or I lose morale and coin. I feel, because there's a, a little story in the beginning of The Witcher 3, uh, where you have a side quest where two soldiers from both sides, so one from uh, the, the Northern Realms and one, one from the Nilfgaardians, that actually helped each other out uh, because they were the only survivors on the battlefield and they found each other. Which was a really, really good story, so I feel like I should just offer this man a small gift of coin. Yeah, I'm gonna lose all morale, but there we go. Morale goes down to the lowest it's, it has been, the lowest it has been. So let's hope that doesn't come into play too quickly. Um, seems like I missed something of loot over there. Oh yeah, on the on the other side. I'm just gonna pick was here, it. just a week past. That was a mill, an inn. Count more than ashes now. And of the people, not a trace. Not even the bodies. Yeah, this looks horrible. Will not stop me from raiding the countryside, but holy crap! Is that bridge down there something? Feel like I shouldn't be walking through fire. Yeah, there was a bridge here, but. I don't even know how they did this. Must have blown it up or something. Let's go through the fire. Doesn't seem like there's a way up to the north. So let's just keep going through the flames and be careful. Wow. Look at that. Oh, a fire elemental. Let's take a look at this. Well, it's not one... Yeah, it is, it is. Born of fire, though humankind has harnessed the power of fire, there remains a deep primal fear of it. And rightly so, for when this element spirals out of control, the consequences can prove catast catastrophic. I refer not to a wildfire, no, but something far, far worse. Place both elementals on the same row and make their power equal. So, uh, a puzzle battle. Which means that we don't have an effect on the morale, which is good. Okay. So we need to put them on the same row, which is what is the case right now. But I'm supposing it's going to swap out. Incendiary elemental and absorptive elemental. After two turns on turn start, absorb the fire on the opposite row and double this unit's power. Whenever this unit takes damage, move it to the other row. And then the incendiary, after two turns on turn start, spawn fire on the opposite row, then half this unit's power. When this unit takes damage, move it to the other row. 
And I have Arbalest Decoys and Regiment Drummer. With Regiment Drummers and Arbalest in my deck. I can't decide what comes out. And I feel like we need to put... So halving would probably mean that it loses 13 points at the moment. And this one will keep doubling. Whenever it takes damage, it moves to the other row. So I think we should start by... Putting an Arbalest down. I'm a damaging the incendiary by one. So that it moves. And then end the turn. Then... We should also use another Garbalas and damage the one in the back. So it goes up to six and puts fire on the front row. So now we're at three and twelve, which is good. So next turn, the other one is gonna go to... I think we're fine, right? So next turn, this one is gonna absorb... The fire over here and double its power. And then in two turns, this one will half its power. So if I just put the regiment drummer down Left, right, and don't left, do anything right. now, I should be fine, I think. Uh, so let's just use decoy and pull one of the arbalests back. And then the turn. And there we go. Now, we. Had a lot more cards than we needed for that one. That was interesting. I love the misdirect. So there we go. The Dustbulk runestone. I am curious what that does. Because maybe I can swap it out for the Morana runestone. Um, so Dustbulk, Dustbulk, Dustbulk. Damage a unit by one. Use this ability eight times. No. Definitely not useful. Especially because our deck is already damage heavy. Uh, I don't think it will be useful to do otherwise, so moving on. So another puzzle battle done, which gives us a few more, a bit more resources. And a letter from Laden Vorto, who is a court mage to King Damavend. Your Majesty, our reconnaissance has confirmed eyewitness reports. Disturbances in elemental equilibrium near places of power have resulted in the sudden appearance of fire elementals. This may be the handiwork of our enemy, a part of their strategy. I will attempt to restrain the creatures before the situation gets out of control. I wait further orders. I feel like he failed. That didn't this this didn't really work out the way he intended it to work out. But moving on. Um, and you know what? I think I can buy another upgrade. Look to the high road. The earth furrowed by wheels, hooves. The black lads went at Rosberg with all their strength. An ominous sign. For Nilfgaard, I'd say. The fortress boasts two new towers, a deeper moat, gate of raw iron. It cannot be taken. Well, we'll see about that, but I feel like we're already too late. Everything is on fire here. Can we go over here? Yeah, we can. So there is a golden chest over there, but I feel like that is... What is that? A standard battle. But it is against monsters, so I think I have the high ground here anyway. So let's try this out. Seems like more ghouls and neckers, so here we go. Seems like the chest in the back was also locked. New roots, contrary to popular belief, Neckers are fairly intelligent creatures. At least intelligent enough to recognize the strategic importance of an abandoned Nilfgaardian camp. These beasts had found a new lair, well protected by a palisade, only they gave no thought to closing the gate. Yeah, because of course they're still monsters. But uh, let's take those, those creatures out. We've been blazing through the last few fights, so... This is a welcome uh, change. Um, I need egg. I just, I definitely need egg. If I can get egg, I'm happy. They're all damaged, so I think the Morana rules, rune stone will come in handy. Ligan Merlot, maybe? No? Alchemist? God damn it. Okay. Every turn on turn starts, I'm gonna on this row. We know that. Um. Let's see. I think we should start with the war wagon. Can't take it anymore. There we go. And then next turn we'll go for the regiment drummer. 
and see what we can do with that. So I'm just gonna let the Nekis keep coming. Left. Let's right. see if we can take Left. advantage of right. that. Um, let's end it on that. More Nekis. The more they're there, the more damage I'll do with... Uh, Oh, impenetrable fog, but that's the highest unit. Yeah, let's just keep the Nekis coming. Um, let's see what the Regiment Drummer gives us. Another Regiment Drummer. Again and again and again. And then I'm going to use Meave and damage the Nekis. There we go. And then use one of the Slingers to just blast. Does that have reach? No. Nope. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. There we go. Three neckers down. And in the graveyards. So, those guys, every turn on turn end, boosts out by one of impenetrable fog is on the battlefield when his unit's power surpasses six spawn of foglet once more. Okay. Interesting. Now let's use this. Uh, okay, Reynard, which is good because I have two each other. drummers on the field. Put the Lyrian Sightman down. Don't really matter where. And then another Sightman. Ah, you don't listen to me, old lady. Listen to me, old lady. Uh, the impenetrable fog, does that stay on there or not? Spawn into penetrable fog, but it doesn't show us what it does exactly. So fine. Let's use another stray slinger and start blasting away Think at those slings. other well. knackers. And damage this foglet so it takes a while for it to uh, recover. And the turn. And then we can use, so they just keep com coming with those uh, those things. I think I'm going to use the Slingers to actually da damage my own uh, light infantry units. Um, so let's just do this. Take two of those guys and then one to the Oglet, I think. Yeah. There we go, and there we go. And let's end the turn. Another Necker Warrior, of course. And they keep boosting themselves. Then let's heal everybody and boost them by two with the Morana Runestone. Because I feel like that's pretty much the only thing I will be able to do. There we go, and the turn. Yeah, but just by the sheer amount of knackers, this is not gonna work, I think. Yeah, and those keep going up, yeah, okay. I'm gonna pass, I think. Although, still have the Lyrian Horn. And with that amount of enemies, I should be able to do some damage. There we go. And then the turn, so that gives us a bit of an advantage. And this one, consume the highest unit from your graveyard, and then orders, yeah. And... Okay. Yeah. What is the most prevalent number on the board right now? Five, I see five about five times. I see four... Also five times, but with no armor. So I think... I think I'm going to go for five, because it blocks the only Foglet that actually still has some fighting power and it doesn't kill anything, which is fine by me. So all the fivers attacked. And then we boost our own units. And then we can use the Forager to take over one of those units. One man's battlefield is another man's right I'm actually wondering, does... Does Egg boost in the deck? No, he doesn't. Damn it. Okay, end of turn. 
And I think his rows are filled, yeah. I think so. That's why I wanted to go further just a little bit. Because I felt like his rows were filled. So he couldn't do anything else. So three more cards. If I pull egg, which I feel like I won't. Nope, I won't. I think I might just pause. Dry pause. Yeah, here we go. Gives me one card advantage in the next round. And it clears out a bit of knackers. There we go. That clears out like four knackers. Which is fine by me. And then we have a few more cards left. Come on, egg, egg, egg. Thank you. He does get strengthened in the deck. Okay, that's good. That is really, really good. So those get damaged. Uh, I'm gonna start by using the medic. Tell me you jest. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Never have a storm knock out one of your teeth. You know what? That actually boosts the egg as well, so I don't actually lose any points. I actually gain more than I lose. Now we have two more slingers. Which I can use to take out the necker if I want to. So let's just keep working on the row here. And there we go. I'm gonna wait one more turn to use Meave. So I can use her twice and use her last at the end of the battle. And they're both with the seven, which is good. So I'm gonna use another slinger. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. There we go. Then use Meave on the ancient foglet. So that gives us eight damage. And end the turn. Probably should use Black Rayla now. Yeah, let's use Black Rayla. I'll fight to my last breath. Gives us five armor as well, and we can use choose a card to actually use. If it doesn't get destroyed. Yeah, okay, so it's just gonna add more Nekis to his deck. Let's see, so we could get whatever we want. I feel like I should use Gascoin pretty much as a last. Not a last, but let's see. Let's put Gascoin on personal, there. I assure you. And then use Black Rayla to get our first Forager out. And get oh, Gascoin with that. And then the turn. Every turn on turn start consumes the top unit from his graveyard. But there's apparently nothing in their graveyard for some reason. Or maybe that's a bit bugged. Yeah, I'm gonna leave Egg as lost. I know I could boost it with the foragers, but... No biggie, no biggie. There we go. Except sometimes they're quite fresh. More Nakus, and they're all just low-level Nakus aside from that one. Finally, so I think we should be fine. So that thing actually has a death wish. Figuratively, not literally. Uh, which means I should actually focus my fire on that one. Let's use Egg and use him on the Rotfield. So that damages those. And the turn. And then use the Lyrian Merlot to boost the Slinger up to 64 as well. And use Meave a final time on the Knackers. Blamo. And we're done. Thank you very much. With low morale to boot. So that was awesome. Okay. So another monster batch down. But the chest is locked. So we can't actually open that up just yet. Which means we're just going to have to make do with what we have here. And as I said before, I want to check out the workshop. So give me a second. Yeah, and as I said before, I want to go for the upgrade to the foragers first. Although there are a few other 
upgrades that are really interesting in the long run. But I think we're good recruit-wise, and that's the only thing I can actually upgrade to, well, give me more recruits after each battle. And the other ones are just uh, reducing the, um, the recruit cost of each unit. So I think I'm going to go for the Alchemist Laboratory. So the Forger is the most important part there. So we boost them to destroy two cards instead of only one. And um, yeah, that's going to be really interesting, I think. So uh, let's do just that. Ooh, that hurts. Especially the wood. That really, really hurts. So the gold we're pretty much good on. Uh, I could buy another upgrade, but I'm not going to. I want to save up a bit. So we check that out. We now have access to Foragers Plus. And we know what that does. So destroy two cards instead of just a one. And the effect is pretty much the same. And now we have the Strays Infiltrator. After two turns, on turn start, boost self by the power of the unit on the right and move to the opponent's side. Which is not incredibly powerful, and I'm at my limit for now anyway. Uh, and then we got we got an upgrade to the Alchemist as well, but I don't really see how much stronger it has become just from that. Because it's pretty much the same thing. I think it might have gone up from 4 to 6. But that's the only thing I can see. Uh, it's still pretty strong, apparently, especially with the new Foragers. That's going to come in really, really handy. So uh, with that done, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Not that much interesting happened story-wise, but we were just setting the mood for what grimness is to come. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, in which we hopefully finally reach Rosberg. And I think we will, because I see an exclamation mark on the top right. So thanks again enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.